So we're going to go blending modes. I'm going to show you this one like, like super quick, but the other one is kind of more fun. Okay, so this is like super easy to do this. I'm just going to show you how to do this. All right, so I'm just going to combine these images, and it's just really just blending modes. And all I'm going to do is grab this, drop it on there, which is already there. Control T, and I want to make this real huge. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this one because I just want to demonstrate more blending modes than anything for this. So we want the fire there. And then all we really need to do is we don't have, always have to make selections on things. And I chose vivid light, it seemed to be the best one. That was linear light. See, that's when the welcome tablet's not so good. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> and so there's a lot of things you can do here um, just using blending modes where you don't always necessarily have to make selections around everything all the time. So a lot of the time when we are trying to make things way too hard, just experiment a little bit sometimes and see if a blending mode is going to get it for you without having to do all the work. And of course, we just got to mask it. We could go in here and we could mask it out just using a black brush. And you know, just, oh, I've still got my scatter brush. Let's <laughs> get a regular brush. I was like, okay, this is starting to look a little weird. Okay, now I know why. All right, and we just paint that out for normal brush. Whoa, that was really bad outside the lines. That pain medication must be kicking in. Okay, so we're just gonna go around here. All right, so you can kind of see now there was some kind of a cartoony effect on that poster. And that's actually just very, very simple to create just using a threshold. So if we just go into here in an adjustment layer and we choose the, that layer and then a threshold adjustment, then it gives you that pencil-y kind of sketchy thing. And... I'm missing a step. Oh, the mask. Here's the thing you can do for mask. You can reuse a mask. So if I option or out drag that mask into the other one, I can replace it. And then if I invert it, I don't have to create the mask twice. So I mean, you know, it's not amazing looking, but I think it demonstrates some nice tools. All right, let's go to this last one here. This one I do enjoy. Just blending things together. <coughs> so we want to kind of create just a nice smooth gradient just using, using masks basically. So we've got this picture here. I'm going to combine it into the other one by going into the tab, pull it down, release it. It's huge. Now here's a tip. Control T brings up free transform. You can't get to those handles. Anyone had problems with that? So there's a couple of ways I do it. When I'm feeling lazy, I click on here and just go like this, and that works. Or the other way is if you hit Control-0, then it will shrink it down until you can see the bounding boxes. So depending on how you want to work, those are good ways of doing that. I'm just going to go like that, apply it. Let me just put it there, and we'll flip the screen. OK, so here's the nice, easy way to blend these is if we create a layer mask by clicking on the mask there, make sure we've got our foreground to background gradient. Remember that same thing we did on the very first example with that type thing? And then you go like this, make sure your foreground and background, you're linear, 100% normal blend mode. So in other words, all the default settings, nothing weird in there. And you can click and drag. Notice how quick and easy we can try different things and we can just kind of blend these together to create a nice smooth blend. See that? We've got all these options that we can do. And that's basically how you can use blend modes, uh, not blend modes, you can use layer masks to create these nice smooth collages just using those gradients and it will seamlessly put things together. And if you wanted to bring the face back a little bit stronger, you would just simply grab a white brush, make sure it's soft edged, and maybe I'll drop the opacity down to 60%. Now, notice the opacity here. If I tap any of these keys, 6 will set it to 60%, 1 will 10%, 0, 100. 
So you want to choose your opacity. You can do it that way quickly, 45, or just tap once, 50. So use those keys all the time. And then you could just come in here and you could just paint this back if you want to make the face a little bit stronger in that area. And uh, more or less, that's it. So I hope there was something there for you guys that was useful.